We are here at Heritage Auctions with our buddy Armand. Yeah. He hit me up, told me he had an exclusive uh, collection he wanted to show us. So they closed the gallery down for us today, and we're going to check out some stuff that I've never seen before, and that Ian's never yeah. seen before, yeah. and that Larry's never seen before. So come on, let's go check it out. Here at Heritage Auctions, they have a wide range and variety of different items here, ranging from shoes, art, rare guitars, and even some rare Beatles stuff. So we're about to take a look at everything they've got here. I'm not even sure where to start. You guys yeah. have any ideas? So let's start off with the sneakers. Yeah, yeah, right. start with the sneakers. yeah, yeah. that's, that's the right. main objective over here. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Started. Yeah. I see you got some interesting dunk highs Something on. Something like Can we yeah. do a little sneaker check? What's everybody yeah. rocking today? So I've got some 04C crystals. Uh, Super probably bold. one of my favorite uh, Silver Box era dunk. Uh, I think probably one of my favorite SBs ever. Uh, designed by Sandy Bodecker, which is the head of SBs. Yeah, yeah that uh, was the guy that was behind the eBay. We might, we might, we might got a little yeah. early eBay dunk yeah. uh, for the Sandy <laughs> Bodecker Foundation. Sandy. This is a uh, color palette too that he he himself chose. Uh, it reminded him it was something that was reminiscent to uh, him collecting seashells out in I believe Connecticut or somewhere around oh, there. Wow. So yeah, I just really love the quality on these, and yeah, I just love how they stand out. Super yeah. dope. Cool. Yep, yeah, I've been rocking these all week. Paisley's <laughs> yeah. got these in Salt Lake City. So these actually, the material actually tears off and reveals like a cream color underneath. Oh, Don't worry, weird. they'll yeah. eventually start to yeah. tear away the mile how much you wear your shoes. <laughs> what you got, Scott? Uh, Midnight Navy Vintage. Nice. Pretty happy about these, first time wearing them. Super cool, I love the little vintage things they're doing now with Same. a lot of the shoes. Same. Kind of correlates to how I dress, so. Earlier in the week, I wore the vintage black and white yeah. dunk highs. Same yeah, you wore it with uh, the full fit mm -hmm. uh, private selection. But today, I did the storm blue high. Definitely one of my favorites. Just a classic for me, easy colorway. Those and the UNCs are my two favorite AJ1s, aside from like rarity would be the Union yeah. black tote. But those and the UNCs. As far as like classic color block uh, yeah. colorways. I think I got more blue AJ ones than, <laughs> than any other colors that I have. So all right, cool. Let's get um, into it. Man, there's a lot to take. I in. see something that I actually own myself. Which one? The Tinker Hatfield oh. from the NFT. I yeah. have one of two size 13s in existence. Oh shit! So you do yeah. have the bigger boys. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually had. I got two of the NFTs. Okay. And I sold one of them to pay for the NFT, so I got that pair for free. Uh, so something really cool about this pair, though. So Tinker Hatfield himself uh, designed the Air Max one back in 1986. It was the first runners to actually show like a visible air unit. So that that to me is actually really really cool. On top of that, uh, this project was um, a collaboration between. Nike and Oregon Ducks. Two thirds of the proceeds went to the football team. So if you look at the shoe, it's also hand signed by Tinker Hatfield and serialized as well by him. Mm -hmm. So that to me just, it's like a huge add on value. One cool thing that I don't know if you know about it, but the box that these came in was yeah. the first of the new series of all the Oregon PEs that they're gonna start making are gonna come in that box and this is the box? first pair ever to wow. have that new box. You can always learn. You seem like we bounce off. So I got a question. Yeah. With with sneakers being over here at Heritage Auctions, is that something new or have y'all always been dealing with sneakers? So we've done that before, but it was kind of like a dabble. They mm. they were sort of not hesitant, but they just they wanted someone that had that expertise that truly knows like what they want to bring into the market as mm -hmm. far as and It's costly someone. to just blindly yeah, go into something like that. Yeah, so. I mean, listen, man, I was, I was based out in Cali, so I was living out there for a few years, and um, I, I reached out to Heritage. I was like, look, I'm, I'm the right guy for you guys. They, they, you know, it took a little while for them to do the interviews, but I just told them more so like what my game plan was. Right. And I just said, look, you bring me on board, I can bring you guys all the coolest stuff ever. And mm -hmm. these are stuff that you won't see out in the market. Even for some private deals, it'd still be a mission for them to even sure. get their hands on it. So I wanted to be, I wanted to make this something more stand out for sure. I feel like there's certain traditional shoes that you expect to see on the auction block. Right, and then, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now that you have a lot more craze behind things that have always been overshadowed, like older dunks that yeah. are now, 
I would consider auction worthy, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think it's interesting. Um, just the time that we're in allows you to bring this to market. It wouldn't have always right. done the same thing before you just had certain rare grails because they were, uh, you know, just very limited quantity or whatever it may be. But now this just about going back and like, wow, I still have that or, yeah, you know not, what I mean? I'm not gonna lie, I feel like nowadays nothing's very limited. Limited yeah. to us on the market, it's like 12,000 pairs. Yeah. Back in the day, limited on the market was like 200 pairs. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so some of these things I'm looking at the display case right now mm -hmm. fall in the category of some of those rarities of just a couple thousand or under, which is unheard of nowadays. And to see all these in the dead stock form is, is mind blowing. Yeah. Before we even pan over, like I've never in my life even seen those in the, person. The so encore, yeah, yeah, course. something cool. So what do we yeah. have right here? So we got the Black Album. This was a friends and family release. Uh, this was a celebration for Jay-Z's second album. Crazy. Yeah, so 48 pairs. 48? Wow. And it was for his like album release party? Yeah, for his album release that's, party. No, that's the shoe scarf. beside yeah, the Black Album, that's a Scar's Pizza. Yeah. That one is also a Hyper Strike, 48 pairs. Was this the one that got auctioned off at Sotheby's for like crazy mm -hmm. numbers? Which is nuts. I, I, yeah. know, I know a guy with like six, seven pairs of them. This uh, was just a, yeah. a pizza store in, in New York, right? Yeah, on the Lower East Side of New so York. So what makes this so popular? I don't understand the, the reason How they even it. got, how did yeah. they even get? Right. Well, wow. DJ Clark Kent too has well, worked behind on this project, so mm -hmm. he's done tons of uh, Nike projects from 112s and all that stuff. So he was uh, a supporter for getting this done. And then I know it's it's a Scar, which is the owner of the pizzeria, and then we have Audi. If I hope I'm saying his name right. So it's three people that worked on this project, and yeah. I assume so. something like that could happen the same way like KD just did a Cardo version, you know what I mean? So if that, if it stems from like Clark Kent and then to what spots in the neighborhood or whatever mm -hmm. and they kind of want to shine a light on something local. Then... I feel like back then you could, they could do that. Yeah. Nowadays I feel like that yeah. could never happen no. again. No. Like it was like that era of being able to like, hey. Yeah. A um, neighborhood. Yeah, like, like yeah. spot. Let's get make 48 pairs. Like I feel like that can not, that wouldn't happen no. nowadays. Now everything that's in these display cases is actually live for sale as well. Yeah, they're gonna be coming up on my auction, which is scheduled for end of the year. It's gonna be auction number 7302. I'm gonna have roughly close to 700 pairs on this auction. So if I were you guys, don't miss out because it might be once in a lifetime opportunity to acquire some of these pieces yep. because trust me, you won't see these floating around. Is there like a sourcing department? Like the people that go out I'm, and find them? I'm the guy. He's the guy. So it's all directed just directly um, through email the, or? So we have an email which is Armand, which is my first name, Plug S. <laughs> yeah, so it's Armand S at ha, H -A dot com. Uh, you guys can just reach out to me. My IG handle is Jet Set Heat. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. On to my favorite. Yeah, on to Scott's probably favorite thing he's gonna see in this entire for, case. For sure, the, the Encore Air Force. Airport. Yeah, and it, on the on the inner sock lining, it's it's a uh, number two. Oh wow. 2004. Yep. How many That's pairs were made 50. on this one? Yeah. 50 Look, pairs. this is number seven of fifty. Yeah. Where's it say that? On the inside. On sock the liner? inner sock lining. Oh, I can't see that. Yeah. 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 If you stand to the left, you'll catch it. Little M and M logo. Yeah. Little patch. Seven. Seven. That's a good, <laughs> yeah. That's a good <laughs> number. It's an early run. You know? Yeah. 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 So. Exactly. So this one says USDA. Which is it's like a, a beef thing, right? But it says no, by the no, it's young Jeezy, no. right? Yeah, but it says yeah. by the streets at the bottom. So yeah, like, it's okay. a United Street Dope Boys of America. There you go. So yeah, so that's Young Jeezy's little crew. Uh, yeah. What are those the other two guys on there? It's a Slick Pulla. Slick Pulla. Pulla is cold, bro. He had that yeah. weird little like nasal flow yeah. voice. Like, <laughs> They've only had one studio album that released. Yeah, which, is winter, have, which has Christina uh, White Girl. Oh yeah, yeah. Is this a numbered pair? Well. There's it's not a number, sample. but it has a sample sample, uh, sample stamp on the inner sock lining. And then from what I know, it's either five or six pairs that exist. And wow. yeah, Mayer himself did a video on it. So you can look Very at cool. it through YouTube. I feel like patent leather is just one of those things that you don't see on the Air Force that like mm -hmm. ever not really as much that anymore. Yeah, that was older. Like yeah, the Halloween the joints, the Brazil, the, Brazils, the, Brazils, yeah, the, the World Cup series, then, like yeah. Portugal and all that. Yeah, they yeah, all they don't do that kind of stuff that. anymore. And then vapes have kind of took over and they yeah. started running with it. And then I just, I yeah. feel like it's non-existent nowadays. Vibe for the Vibe magazine. It plays into like, so they did the 10 year anniversary. Their first magazine issue was back in 1993. This came out in 2003, uh, Raul Rivera was the one that worked on this shoe as well. He used to work for Buy Magazine, so it was kind of nice that they had someone as well from that mm -hmm. side. Um, Verifying, yeah, kind of just just like yeah. going through the design process yeah. of this shoe, you know. And 
it's only it's a hyper strike too. So there's only 48 pairs, friends right. and family release. That's the Odell Beckham Jr., right? Yeah. I feel like I've, yeah. I just saw that I posted just, not so that long ago. I was just talking about that. I don't remember. Recently. I just saw this online. Yeah, that shit's crazy because like every pair has a card that comes with it. it, has this crazy box. It reminds me of like a bespoke shoe. Like, yeah, yeah. You got the X on the X stitching on the seams of the shoe. You got Kevlar mesh on the toe cap. You got pony hair. Uh, it has suede. Um, you got 3M as well on the eye straight tongue uh, on the tongue label. Oh, I see it. Back yeah, cap. I see so it. So many interesting So many details. It's a semi-translucent midsole. Um, oh, really? Can, oh, I yeah, see it. Yeah, you can, kind of, you can yeah. see it from this angle. I kind of like how it's a it's little got subtle. That, it's got not that bluish. Clear. Yeah, yeah. You look like you can see through. A the bit. lace dubre has that cold, uh, gold text, which mm. uh, signifies the, his birth year. Ninety-two. And then it has um, OBJ and Nike. Uh, stitch onto the insole, so they, they went above and beyond for this shoe. Yeah, that's nice. I forgot to mention, but for the uh, Tinker Hatfield, the Oregon Ducks, I think there were six pairs that were destroyed because the people didn't claim their NFTs. I remember there was a picture floating around where they had six pairs yeah. torched up because they didn't claim their NFT. I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure the other person has the other size 13 yeah. never claimed. It's, it's a one on one. Yeah. His pair's probably torched up too. <laughs> Why? Because you just haven't seen it on the internet anywhere? No, because you could go to the NFT and see if it was claimed before. I haven't yeah. gone back and checked in a minute. If there's only two made, your odds are very high. Very, yeah, yeah. It hadn't been, because he was trying to still sell the NFT at that point. Right. So I mean, yeah. we're going to torch it. It should be something that'd be known virally that, I'm just that, saying, that happened. It sucks now with the crypto market, too, because yeah. that guy thought he was holding on to it if he was holding <laughs> on to it. <laughs> All, right, All right, so now we're moving on to some things I've never seen in person yet either. Yeah. And what's funny is like, there's not a lot of promotion behind these colorways. They're really pushing general yeah. release pairs, but they also have friends and families. And you were telling us something crazy that the group of the ones that came out in this collection are all numbered to just 200. Yeah, so from what I know, it consists of eight colors. There's a yellow, uni blue, purple, black, red, green, orange. In total, there's only less than 200 pairs. So it's a little difficult for me to kind of tell you exactly for the purple how many there are right. or for the uni blue, but I would say maybe like 12 to 25 the division then it yeah, it's, about. It's, yeah. I still remember whenever they were giving seating these out when ASAP Bari hit us up. It was like, hey, how much? He was like, how much do you think this is worth? Yeah. First, you know, and I was like, bro, there's no way for it's us like to tell. It's like a rainbow. Yeah, there's no there's way. There's no way. For there's us no way, to way to the I mean, I've only seen a handful of people get the solid color ones in to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you. I, I can guarantee you. Go online and try to show me. 10 pairs of the purple. Yeah, 10 different fine. individuals that have the purple, you will yeah. not be able to do that. Do that same thing with the uni blue, with the black. Um, I say the most desirable colors is the the purple, the uni blue, and the green. This uni opinion. blue is, is nasty. nasty. They, have a, they have a royal colorway too, so it's, uh, it's just royal a darker. Blue. Yeah, royal blue. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to remember which color. I feel like that. I've just seen the had orange. It was orange? Yeah. Okay. That's the only ones I've really, like, I think Offset got an orange one too, but then there's like even yeah. like old head rapper, I think Nelly or somebody like that got <laughs> yeah. like a crazy color yeah. too. But it's just funny how you figure out who gets seated the pairs and who doesn't. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. curious as if Virgil, when he passed away, he's like, had this list and he's yeah. like, yeah. All right, yeah. guys, when I leave, like, it's my top 200 sure dead or alive. These guys are taken yeah. care of. Whatever you want to do with the rest, I don't care. Now, are you allowed to tell us who owned these sneakers? I got to keep that confidential, okay. but I'm pretty sure you guys don't know who it is. Oh. PS, PS knows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else we got? These Ready? are some familiar faces going yeah. on. I right will now. say, this is my dream shoe. Paris? Of all Paris. time. Paris. All, yeah. time. all time. If That's I could pick one shoe, it'd be yeah. that shoe. But it's the minute you get something on it, you're just, you're, I don't you don't You got canvas of suede. I wouldn't even wear it. I would That's... just put it in a case like that in my house. Fair enough. Shrine. <laughs> Shrine. Yeah, Shrine. It's rumored of what, like 150 pairs that yeah, I float around. And they're all different. They're all different. So yeah. it's all one sheet. This is all based off of, off of the work from Bernard Buffett. Um, he passed away in 1999. This is a 02 release, if I'm not mistaken. But okay. every 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 pair is unique from one another. So they did one whole sheet of canvas right, of his artwork. Chopped it, yeah. and and chopped chopped it all it up. up. Yeah. So even, even the left and the right is it's unique. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and then the classic. Everyone yeah. knows these. This was uh, unreleased just because New Line Cinema uh, yeah. went after Nike. Yeah. They didn't get any sort of confirmation before they even released this. Um, and once they got the cease and desist letter, this was already kind of down the line when some of the retailers already got a pair. Right. So what ha happened was they actually started to torch up the pairs too. And a lot of the non-sample pairs, they have oil stains on them. 
So the sample pairs don't have oil stains, but the ones that were technically supposed to be released, they got oil stains on them. I had always heard that the rumor was like they had released on like Mexico's they did. website, right? Or no, I think it was a retailer out of Mexico. A retailer out of Mexico. And that was like 30 pairs. Yeah, only, only, the, only yeah. those got, got out yeah. there too, right? There's different iterations. You got the prototype, you got the other sample, which the placement of the sweater is different. I've even seen like sort of like a looksy sample yeah. where they had a pink. One, I thought. Yeah, so the sample ones, they got like different coloring on the... On the, on the sweater? On, not, yeah, so like the, that's a prototype. Well, would have been in the sweater, yeah, that's I a, guess. Yeah, that's a prototype and gotcha. there's just different color palette as well. Then there's another one where they have a different splatter, which is a sample. Um, then they also have one that I've seen that I think is a looksy sample where it has pink color splatter on, on the it. shoe. Yeah. yeah. And there's only like one photo of that lingering around the web, and I'm like, you cannot, you I can't cannot even find yeah. that photo. I, I, yeah. I'm like, I'm like a nut job. I, I wonder who even has that shoe, you know? Bro, his like, <laughs> his he got them somewhere under a rock. Like he will Crazy. never like pop out and tell you who it is. This is cool. one of my all-time favorite Air Max ones. Yeah, the also. cherry wood. Yep, yeah. those are beautiful too. Nasty. Absolutely love those. And then you Hunter got the Kings. high knees. Yeah, yep. can't those go wrong. Classic, style. classic shoe. Crazy how it much it just sucks because like with the suede over time, it just turns to shit. Yeah, it just fades and yeah, that's what I get. So paranoid ugly. with these, you yeah. know, like you just yeah. gotta even like the cherry stussies that I have, yeah. that, like yeah. right there in that one yeah, part, they, they start rub rubbing, off, bro. I it hate changes that. brown. Yeah. I, the stussy ones are like whenever I go and go trying to find me another pair, yeah. it's always right there. They're just it's straight. Always, these Rashids, yeah, yeah. Rashid Wallace. Yeah. Um, That's an unreleased sample. bumper, 1998. Look like it's Rashid size too. Yeah, it does. For someone his size, yeah, I would assume he'd be walking around yeah, like size 18. 18. Yeah, size 18. You want to know something crazy that I just bought because I just thought it'd be hilarious? Size 20 uh -huh. of the Vietnam 25th anniversary dunk. Size 20. You talking about the white one with the, the white and red? Yeah, the white and red, red yeah, with yeah. the 25th. Yeah, I got a size the, 20 just because I was like, this is gonna be nuts to put somewhere. Yeah. Who? I don't what? know, bro. Size 20. I didn't even know they made them. Size 20. Size 20. Not, the not box, the so box is like this. It's like a, it's a, it's a dunk box, like that big. Like, <laughs> but it's just gonna be cool for us to have. Pounds off the back, yeah. that thing. Size 20, this bro. This crazy. Still got the sample tags on it. Yeah, too. yeah, nice. yeah. So that's and an unreleased. unreleased. Yep. Unreleased. I mean, the quality on those is insane. It's all tumble leather upper. Yeah. I mean, I can if it. Nike were to release something like that today, I would wear them straight to the ground. Yeah. Just because of the comfort behind it, like this premium quality. On that. This is all Kobe. All, yeah, those are the pieces. Yeah. This sole is leather. Yeah, the yeah, sole, leather is, sole is leather. Yeah, <laughs> leather wrapped. Yeah. They don't do that anymore. The, well, the, the only shoe I can think of is like the, the uh, Amal Manier 2s where mm -hmm. they wrapped the sole again. I don't even know what snake. that was. Yeah, yeah. It was like a weird snake skin. Like, like, it was like real wrap. Like, yeah, wrap yeah. like a car with it. Yeah. This is, I, you could it's see the, the raw they, cut. They wrapped it. They wrapped it. You could see the raw cut after the yeah. after the sale. I love these gradient colors that they caught. Yeah, that's a 3M material. Yeah, the 3M with the gray and the white, like the office white. What I love this? sorry the mushroom okay. joints like these are crazy just because it's a two-tone color mm -hmm. you got the contrast stitching that outlines the yeah. swoosh you got all over this like all of the upper I mean you know it's just a two-way colorway and like look inside of the sock yeah, line yeah. Yeah. Leather, soft is. the tongue label is a leather Bro, like, the insole is leather the insole yeah. is leather the that insole. has Kobe's insole signature leather too. too yeah it is yeah Wow, that's crazy. So there's a lot of like um, the only shitty part about that is it's on the Air Force and one wear in the Air Force is yeah. just completely destroyed. I, I don't but know. I think Air Force I don't still know if it's all rubber. Leather. It's, it's just rubber and leather. It's a, right. Yeah, it's, it's so a there's rubber not mix, enough so stuff gonna, to there's people crumble. I went to Japan before and like I was I, I literally saw tons of people when I went in 2018 there were tons of people wearing 94s and like even though the rubber on them might be stiff as hell, they're still wearable. The only thing that can happen is the glue. So you'd the get glue. the separation of the yeah. top and bottom, but it wouldn't crumble. You would just get separation. You just, you just you gotta re-glue. Re yep. Yeah, you just re-glue yep. and it's back. What do we got on this next one? That one is a, so back in the day, Kobe was a sneaker free agent. He had left at Adidas. Mm -hmm. And at that time he was sporting like all kinds of fly stuff from Nike, Jordan brand. That's when he was seen wearing uh, Allen Iverson's question dress. Yeah, he wore the yeah. yeah. in between joints, contracts. Yeah. Cause that's why they did the Kobe yeah. question mm -hmm. act with LeBron yeah. in yeah. his high school colors. Yeah, nice. so you can see him wearing like the threes. He had the sevens. Uh, he's worn chrome eights. Like he's worn tons of stuff. Yeah. And then he actually wore those, I believe, in November of 2003. And um, exactly it fair. wasn't a signature so, to him, though, right? So, he just so not, that's not exactly the same exact okay. hair, but that is the same shoe that he had wore back in the day. Yeah. So 
what from what I know is Kobe went to the Twenty One Mercer, right? Of course, there, Soho, yeah, New York. and um, that's the only location where they do the beast boat. Yeah, so what he did was this was made in twenty seventeen. On the tag it says VIP Kobe, and on the box as well it says made for Kobe. Huh. Cool. Wow. So it's so his. You just never came and got him, or what? I, I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't yeah, matter. Someone at Nike, Nike got to have to. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm looking at what's coming next. Yes. I have no idea what yes. I'm looking at. We have resident at. My expert, <laughs> Eric, will hand. We'll resident expert here. I am Eric Grubbs. <laughs> I work in the music and entertainment department. I catalog a lot of these items. What do y'all think it is? Okay, let me give me a second. Let me just kind of see what we got here. I got the okay, so Beatles. The Beatles were here. So it's 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 for sure backwards because I see color on the side. So this is the back side of whatever it was. George Harrison. No what is that say? Oh look, see if you can. England. 1964. I have no idea. Just in terms of is this something? Shape in the way is this something from cool. Woodstock? No. This is from the Ed Sullivan Show. The okay. first time that they performed on the Ed Sullivan Show, on February 9th, 1964. They signed this right before they did their second set, and you know this is kind of seen at well. Kinda. It is seen as like the following day pop culture had changed because when people talk about where they were when Kennedy was shot, right. when um, uh, Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, people talk about the Beatles the on Ed yeah, Sullivan yeah. in the same kind of way because it's like suddenly what was the popular thing of like Frank Sinatra, Perry Cuomo, now who are these like Long, yeah. long haired yeah. guys yeah. from Liverpool, you know, playing essentially their version of Bill Haley and Little Richard. And it's all like, you know, here are these mop tops. Yeah. And it's like, who are these guys? Right. And so the thing is, is that the stagehands would have all the performers sign this. And at the end of the season, when it wrapped up, they were just tearing all these sets down. This is part of a movable set. Mm. That's and why Cher's on there? Yeah. Is that Cher? Is that Cher? No, it's, no, no, it's, no, no, uh, it's uh, Searchers. Yeah, Searchers, okay. the Searchers. Uh, instrumental band. And uh, there's some other uh, signatures on here of just other performers that we don't know. And we right. don't know who wrote The Beatles Were Here, but it was clearly not Ringo, George, uh, Paul right. or John. they would have written it up right. closer to their signatures. Or, 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 the, hand yeah. or the handwriting is not saying yeah, right. It, yeah, it's significantly different. And right. normally, if you see signed, authentic signed Beatles stuff, you don't see signatures this big. Yeah, um, they're small. I mean, these have doodles with them. I think this is the first time I've ever seen Paul McCartney refer to himself as Uncle. 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 <laughs> yeah. So it's stuff like that. And so they, they, t they tore this down and they gave it to a fan. Okay. And she had it in her possession for many years. Then it was sold. And then it's just wound up here. Wow. Legally, of course. Legally. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this is like... This is probably the biggest co uh, collection of signatures from the Beatles that we've ever seen. Yeah. Wow. So if you had to put a number on this, if you could, I mean, I know everything's well, an auction, auction, so yeah, okay. what, would it, what would some start at if you had to at least? Well, we're going to open this at 600 grand, <laughs> and it would be amazing if this could go over a million. Right. Right. So, right. So, yeah. Would that be a record for some sort of Beatles signature? In the Probably, sense? yes. And then yep. is there anyone else on here besides the Beatles? I know you said you didn't know some of the other names, yep. but is there anyone else on here besides them that's relatively no. known? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> We, like every auction, have rare Beatles, Beatles memorabilia. Like even an empty cardboard shipping box for dolls can sell like four or five hundred dollars. Nice. An, an empty shipping because it's just that that kind of a demand. Because mm -hmm. it was like most of them something were just something to just have. Some, yeah, it's something. Yeah, I mean, because so many of them were just like tossed away because it's like you know when we get Amazon packages yeah, we just don't think it. oh let's hold on to these Amazon packages <laughs> yeah, because of boxes. the name on the box yeah. Yeah. yeah so memorabilia is a very interesting thing because it's like you're seeing like two very different generations between right you know something from the Ed Sullivan set and all these sneakers and it's just like what's the common thing it's rarity yeah it's rarity and um you know when this is this is never this will never be reproduced and uh, and for these sneakers, like what only hundreds yeah, yeah. were or made. Less, or less. So it's kind of like for people that don't understand it. It's it it all like why does Heritage have so many varieties? It's just the limited scarcity. Of it, yeah, sure. You know, there is kind of this Tell me some stuff. like weird sort of story about this guitar, guitar over right here. Do y'all want to talk yes, about it? Or... it
what we have here is a guitar that was offered up as ransom by George Harrison. Okay. So ransom, what, what, what does that mean? So basically it was this, is, is that this is a 1958 Les Paul Gibson, it's a sunburst color. This was offered up in trade because by accident, a guy bought a red 57 Gibson Les Paul that was stolen from George Harrison's house. This is in the early 1970s. This was something that was given as a gift from Eric Clapton to George Harrison. Wow, okay, and, that's well, crazy. It was, this red guitar was stolen. And so it was put up on sale at a local music shop. This guy from Mexico was in town visiting a friend and he saw it and he was like, I want that. So he bought it having no idea that it was stolen. Well, George Harrison was like, uh, before you go back to Mexico, I want that guitar back. And the guy's like, I bought this. How, would, how did they trace it? How would they even Receipts. Know? Receipts. He called the store and saw like, who bought this? And so like they saw the receipts and it was like, oh, Miguel Ochoa of Guatemala, Mexico. And so he got the phone number of the house he was staying at and was like pleading with him. It was like, please give me the guitar. It's like, no, I, I bought it fair and square, yeah. final sale. And so he's like, would you take this sunburst guitar and a Fender P bass? Okay. Would that suffice? And so the guy said, Okay. <laughs> so I believe they went down to Mexico and made the trade. In so, Mexico? Yeah. Wow. So two That's guitars cool. for two for one for this one red guitar. And and at the time I was all like, you know, the guitar the red guitar is known as Lucy. And well, I thought, oh, there's there's probably not a lot of pictures of George Harrison playing. No, there's an entire Wikipedia page <laughs> devoted to it. And it's all like, oh, here he is recording it with the Beatles and him recording it on his solo album. Where is the red guitar? Yeah, where is the red guitar? That is a wonderful question. We probably still in the Harrison yeah, okay. state. In, in the family. Yeah, I was because say, like, how, so many years and there's still yeah. no trace of it. It's gotta be. The sound that George could get on um, on a guitar like this, he just figured he could get he could trade this yeah. because like the kind of sound that he could get on that 57 Lucy well, it's just, where it's like yeah. there's no other way that you can do this very cool <laughs> awesome very cool so yeah thank you yes All right. you're welcome thank yes. you so much special thank you to Heritage Auctions this was a hell of an experience yeah. we saw some very very cool stuff I knew we were going to see some cool stuff when we came in yeah. but I didn't expect to see everything that we saw so thank you guys for having us it was a pleasure Armand we look forward to working with you in the future you guys have some incredible stuff here and uh, we're gonna have to come back because we didn't yeah. get to show you guys yeah. everything yeah. so this place is goes way beyond these four walls so yeah. we're gonna have to come back do another stroll through show you guys a whole lot of other interesting things that are beyond these doors so we will see you guys next time thanks for hanging out